Hey, Randy Joe here, and welcome back to January Blues, the series where I'm going to listen to a different blues album every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Originally, we were doing Monday through Friday, but we're switching things up going forward simply because uh, an output of Monday through Friday plus new releases would be a lot, uh, both for you and for me. I don't want to, you know, oversaturate my channel with too many of these videos. I kind of want to have a nice mix. So again, Monday, Wednesday, Friday is what we are going to be doing going forward. Meaning for January Blues, we have this album and uh, one more album after this to end the month. But today, we are looking at the John Spencer Blues Explosions 1994 album, Orange. This album was actually suggested by a viewer, uh, B.B. Luger, who recommended an album previously this month, also recommended this one. He said, don't forget the John Spencer Blues Explosion. Acme is a great album by this band, well worth a listen to this group. Well, I was going to listen to Acme until he followed it up with, I meant to say the album Orange by this band, although their albums are all worth a listen. Uh, which, you know, I'm, I'm sure if I like this album, which knowing the first track, I am familiar with it already, I probably will enjoy this album. And knowing that, I will probably listen to the rest of their discography at some point if this album impresses me as a whole. So, B.B. Luger, thank you for the suggestion. And let's just jump into it. Orange is about 13 songs long. It's got 44 minutes uh, worth of content to consume here. So let's get into Bell Bottoms, the opening track, which I am already familiar with. As you can see, I already liked it. And I'm familiar with it because it was the opening track in the movie Baby Driver. A phenomenal movie by Edgar Wright. Highly suggest it if you have not seen it. But this opening track here, Bell Bottoms, is a, is a pretty insane track. So let's just not waste any time. Let's listen to it. That iconic, iconic drum breaker at the start there. Those strings are beautiful. Gorgeous strings. They just soar. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, just iconic, that incredible shouting over top of everything. And you got that bluesy voice too underneath. And this is kind of a uh, punk blues album as well. Kind of splices some punk elements into the mix. Like, we're only a minute and a half in, and there's already so much that's happened. Oh, that bass line. Very bluesy, but also just like so heavy on the drums on this track. Kind of jazzy as well. I love the the gorgeous bass line. Kind of sounds like it's coasting along with the instrumentation. Like riding a wave. And it just keeps going. It keeps soaring. It goes right up. It does not let up at all. Mm, so many sound effects too. That beeping in the background there. Amazing. Like, everything about this track is perfect. I think this is an incredible explosive energy to kick off the album. That five minutes. There's so much that happens. Incredible. Uh, but again, I am already familiar with that. Love that track. Already a big fan of that track. So let's go into some uncharted territory. I've never heard the rest of this album. It will all be fresh for me. So let's just get into Ditch. This is the second track here. It's got a very bluesy tone. You know, that atmosphere and the overall cadence that he sings in is very bluesy. Has that throwback sound. I love the guitar playing on here. I'm not sure which uh, band member is doing the guitar work, but they're a fantastic player for what this band uh, requires in its energy. I love how much of a stylistic change up this band implements in each track. Things don't meander forever. Oh, what an explosive sound. That's heavy. That is hard. It's like a hard kick. Oh, I love that squealing. 
That is amazing. Really pushing the amazing, amazing second track. Loved it. Loved the energy. It's keeping it high. We're going right into dang. A shorter track. Oh, much more punk. Especially that rattling drum. Mm. We got some harmonica in the mix. Can't be a blues band without some harmonica. This is like very punky blues music. That really rough, distorted production. Really bordering into noise here. Explosive finish. Short, sweet, right to the point. Very punky. Let's get into very rare. Second most popular track here at a million streams. Hmm. Already a more concrete sense of rhythm than the last one. A great instrumental so far. Really well produced album overall. It's very clean. Manages to capture such an explosive energy without any of the mix sounding muddy or, you know, one instrument overcrowding another. Hmm. Got a drum solo? I really like this one. It's so playful. It's so just like fun. It's got a nice cute tone over too. It's not as explosive as those opening tracks, but it's very almost low key and still fun and upbeat. Great track. Like I said, very fun, very upbeat. It's nice to strip back the vocals and focus on the gorgeous instrumentation of the band here. Uh, we're going to go right into Sweat is the name of this one. It's kind of got that uh, Elvis Presley sort of delivery, you know, that there's definitely some sort of inspiration there, I think, on the, the singer. Oh, belting it out. A lot of inspirations from the past, while at the same time trying to push things very forward in terms of its sound, especially for the early 90s. Kind of reminds me of a 3D Country by Geese, which released last year. Similar cadence he's singing in. Really great, just like distorted bass line on this one. And the rhythm here, like. I love that. Nice country twang. So many different styles colliding on this one. This is a great track. God damn. Incredible performance from the singer on that one, but everything was just so sharp on that track. Let's just go into the next one. We've got Cowboy. Is this one going to have a more country twang to it? I love a good country blues mix. It certainly does have that twang kicking in here. I'm a, I'm a sucker for that southern drawl. Really good uh, melody on this one, that rhythm. Isn't developing all that much, but I do like it. Between all these very chaotic tracks, it's nice for a little bit more of a laid-back, chill, twangy track. Alright. I like that one. Like I said, love that country draw. But next we're going to go into Orange, the title track. Really great drummer on this LP so far. That kick... That kick feels very heavy within the drum. I love the very, uh, almost like absurdist lyricism as well. Oh. I like that gentle plucking in the background there. It's like a, some sort of string instrument, almost like a harp. It's so subtle. Oh my goodness. So many like, pivots in direction here. One thing I'm liking about this album so far is the band never tends to meander too much in one zone. They really love switching it up. Even in these short tracks, like there's just a constant change up in style every 30 to 40 seconds. You can't predict where they're going. I love that drop too. Heavy. Mm. 
Oh. What an eerie drop. Those strings really just building attention. Definitely one of the most explosive albums I've listened to for January Blues. Definitely. By far. Uh, next, we're going into Brenda. Let's hear a little bit about Brenda, shall we? That high pitched voice. Very different than uh, what we're used to. Building up, it's ramping up to this more explosive sound. Very distorted already, that production. Not liking this one as much as the others, but uh, maybe I've been spoiled by how dense a lot of these earlier tracks were. Okay, not much to say about this one. I like the rhythm, but I mean, it's nothing as interesting as some of these earlier tracks here. But uh, next we're going into Dissect. Oh. That guitar feels so like vibrato. It's so like rigid. That bass is just so thick. Ooh, kicking right into these drums. That drummer is my, my favorite player here. Play the blues punk. Interesting, considering this is a very punk blues album. A little tongue in cheek. Man. The vocals here, they're so, you know, bizarre, somewhat self aware. But they really add to that atmosphere. All right. Uh, I thought Dissect was fantastic. Explosive energy. I really like that rigid, rough bass line on there. And the drumming is, of course, still just as clean as ever. Uh, just the, the clean focus of it and the clear sort of instrumentation really parallels that very rough, rigid, girthy bass line. And then, of course, the singer here, I'm assuming it's John Spencer, he really has a way of performing that is so unique, yet feels completely uniform with the rest of the band. Next, we're going to go into Blues X-Man. Knowing this came out in the 90s, uh, I feel like the Blues Explosion, John Spencer Blues Explosion, must have played a pretty strong influence on Geese and their last album, 3D Country, because so much of this album is really making me think of that one. Um, and that just came out 2023, so that have been last year. Um, cool to see such a unique band play such an influence on a, another very unique band of the modern day. You can hear it, the vocals especially, and very experimental sound. They love shouting themselves out, but for good reason. They are certainly an explosion of blues. What the f- That was a jump scare and a half. Oh, that was eerie as hell. Also kind of reminds me of Primus from the 90s. Would have been cool to see Primus go a bluesy route. I love those backup vocals too. Really holding that note. Yeah, this is amazing. This track, I'm loving this one. Kind of reminds me of the opener in a way. How much variation there is. Jesus, this is full of jump scares on this one. Oh my! This is like... I, I have no words. I have no words for this one. The Blues X-Man just ended very abruptly, by the way. That's got to be probably one of the craziest tracks here. Like... Oh, man. There's not even like a gradual shift in tone on that one. Some of that is just like sonic whiplash. But, Wow certainly wakes you up next we've got full grown love that last one let's just i'm loving the energy on this this entire lp especially from the singer 
Great bass line too. So many great bass licks on this thing. Big fan of the bass, by the way. I love that shouting. It's so like punk, that punk infusion into the blues here. I think punk and blues are such a complement of genre to one another. What the fuck? What is this, some sort of synthesizer? There's just these synths, these these otherworldly alien synths are so like swirling in the mind. God, I love that very deep regimen there. That, oh. Sister Ray? Is that a reference to uh, the Velvet Underground? Their second album, White Light, White Heat, has that amazing Sister Ray track on there, which is like 17 minutes of pure noise rock. I definitely see the influence on the John Spencer Blues Explosion. This is a great track. It's so really highlighting the weirdness of this uh, of this band and the last one. Looking for a like a cougar, I think on this one, as they call it. Are cougars still a thing? I guess they don't really stop being a thing. But uh, great track, great great track. Going right into flavor here. Longest track on the album. This being a longer six minute track, I wonder if it'll develop a bit more gradually. As fast as this drum beat is, it hasn't uh, changed up yet, so I, I feel like it's gotta build. I feel like it's definitely gonna build up to something explosive. Mm. Oh, here we go. It's gotta explode here. Nope. Okay, maybe I was, I was blue balled again. Oh, this is what I was looking forward to. That is certainly not the drop I was expecting. Very strange effects being uh, interspersed here. Hmm. Getting chaotic. Oh, oh, oh. It just, it just stops. Playing with me here. Certainly full of themselves. They're not lacking an ego. What? What is this like swampy, lo-fi, distorted? I think I'm in some sort of eerie. Holy shit. I feel like I'm in some sort of weird TV set in another dimension. God, this is crazy. I think being possessed. What a crazy track. What an insane... How did they just get crazier and crazier? I thought Blue's X-Man was the peak in terms of its strangeness. Full Grown was pretty weird, but maybe not as weird as Blue's X-Men, but still. I was like, you can't get weirder. There's no way we're going to get stranger than this. And then and then we get to Flavor, which that back end especially. What the hell? It's like some sort of sonic possession. Next, we're going to Greyhound. This is the last track, closing things out. I wonder if it'll get weirder or if maybe it's gonna hone things down back to, oh. Got that nice reverse effect. I really love the evolution of this album. I really like this instrumental. Feels a bit more gradual. Definitely a bit more of a, you know, brought down from the high that was those the last few tracks. A little less experimental. Still unique. I love the steadiness of the drums throughout this album. It's got a good sense of just like keeping a beat. Oh. I love the. It kind of gives me like a G-Funk vibes, like early 90s rap albums. 
God damn. That heavy, like... That, that heavy drop. Inject that into my veins. Holy hell. What an album. And it's, it's hard to even talk about this one. B.B. Luger, who suggested this, th thank you, thoroughly loved this album. Loved it. One of my favorites I've heard this month for January Blues, for sure. Just off of a first listen, I can say that the energy, the execution, the experimental elements of it, the uniqueness of it, really makes it stand out uh, as such a bold and interesting album still to this day. This came out in 94. That's 30 years ago. And you're not hearing stuff like this to this day still uh, that often because it's just so out there. It's so unique. And it really does take the blues genre, uh, especially the electric punk blues genre, and like cranks it way way up makes it super intense and in your face loved it i loved the overall energy and direction of this album i loved how it almost got weirder and weirder as it went on that second half especially all the very synthy elements of it but then you had some really great strings arrangements on some of these tracks obviously bell bottoms being i think the the best in terms of showing off the strings you know, you got some nice Western influence on this. You've got the, I think, Elvis Presley-esque vocals as well from, I believe, Spencer himself. There is a lot to really get out of this thing. There's so many different styles and genres and just unique sort of production choices throughout this thing that really does make it stand out as a, a one-of-a-kind album. So yeah, that pretty much does it for the listening portion. I gotta say... I am just very happy with everything I've heard so far. And uh, again, thank you, BB Luger. If you're watching this one, I'm sure you are since you suggested it. Uh, this is this is this is probably one of the most mind blowing things I've heard in, in a little while. So thank you. But that pretty much does it for this video. Uh, this is the second to last album I'll be listening to for January Blues. So. You know, I will do a blues roundup at the end of the month or maybe February 1st. I'll release that one to sort of go over everything I've listened to this month. Um, not sure if I'll do some sort of ranking or if I'll just talk about different albums that I enjoy more than others or, or what I feel like I've learned from the blues. Uh, but all in all, we'll, we'll see what happens. This is sort of a learning experience for me. We're kind of kind of just doing whatever and seeing the journey it takes us. I'm very excited for, for February, the genre that we're going to dive into for February is one that I think will be have a plethora of albums that I could check out. Um, but seeing as we're doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday, instead of Monday to Friday, uh, it'll come out to about 12 albums a month per genre. So keep that in mind. As always, if you like this video, please hit like and subscribe to follow along in listening to albums such as this. Uh, or newer releases, older releases, albums you suggest, whatever you want, uh, because we're just having a good time right now. We're keeping keeping the ball rolling, so why not? And as always, my name is Randy Joe, and I'm signing off.